Hello, <laughs> Rory. Uh, it's really nice to have you. Um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions about the film uh, that our audience has just watched, uh, The Undercurrent, which is, I think, it's a beautiful, beautiful work. Um, I just wondered if you could maybe um, start with an explanation of the title. What does it mean in the work? Oh, um, yeah, I actually, the undercut, the title was one of the first things that I started with. Um, I was, yeah, I was thinking a lot about just uh, as um, a symbol of bodies, like a body of water, in water, of course, you have the undercurrent, which is this force, which um, is, you know, it's there potentially, but you can't really see it. It's below the surface, this sort of, um, this, 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 uh, this force and that's the the term the undercurrent has been used in both kind of a means that is kind of um, destructive but also within a political sense the undercurrent being a a potential movement of change or or, or change which is co um, existing with the current time or or influencing the time um, of course, you can also have other undercurrents like, like racial under, undercurrent, tone, like as a tone, which is, uh, so it has this both negative and positive. Um, but I was thinking of it, yeah, as a title, just in terms of also as a start, as a, a starting word or metaphor to be able to start the conversation about climate change and um, thinking about this thing which we might not necessarily see or it's quite hard to quantify but we know it's there so um yeah the, the title came first of all really hmm. thanks um one of the things that your film uh for me uh re reflects is this idea of a type of intersectional activism so climate activism that's also merges with other struggles um, I was wondering if you uh, have a similar vision. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose just um, like from learning from others or other things in the past to do things intersectionally, I think is uh, like learning from intersectional feminism. It's always been something which I've learned from and tried to apply within my work. And I think in terms of climate activism, it was the most almost quantifiable way to deal with with it or kind of create a conversation. Um, so even from the open call, which I made, um, which brought the te teenagers who responded together, it, that word intersectional was there, how to look at climate change from an inter in an in intersectional way and the way that it intersects with other things from our lives. And I think on the open call it had things such as friendship, um, like uh, home, relationships, all of these things. So I think, yeah, we I used it as a way also is to start the conversation, just like I did the word the undercurrent and how to um yeah when we talk when we talk about um the climate or what it means to to take care of the earth what what language are we using like what does it mean to be a guardian or to uh, to, to to take to clean one's house i don't know all of these things and how how do we acquaint that language to other things but also other struggle other struggles or um series of oppressions that we 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 find in our lives mm, yeah i think that's also uh, you can see that quite clearly in the work um i was wondering does uh i think there could be a, a particular role for collective intelligence in uh, uh climate activism in particular um this seems to reflect uh this what I see as a type of radical empathy in your work, but how do you see the the, the function of a collective intelligence? Oh, um, yeah, I suppose it's the, like my, like, 
like it's almost a, not a struggle but um like I'm very um nervous or I by this idea of collectivism um like I myself kind of grew grew up here uh, like uh, within a religious community so um this idea of like what where does an individual find freedom or is allowed to be oneself within a collective is maybe a question which I'm always wrestling within my work and I think I suppose the role of collectivism for me is how do we create this kind of un, kind of collapse that binary between the individual and the collective in which there is this kind of in, not an equal but this sort of level of freedom in which collective thinking really means about listening listening to every single voice um and thinking about who is listening who is not listening and that the collective voice is made up of so many different voices and i think when it comes comes to yeah climate activism of course it's this thing which is kind of we in terms of an issue it is like the whole world um but it's very it, it's a very localized experience as well to talk about climate activism from one context to another complete like the priorities change um so i think i'm yeah, I'm always trying to wrestle with between this idea of collectivism and kind of in like an, like an individual voice or the space or freedom for an individual to um, to breathe. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think you're really touching at the heart of uh, a lot of what we're going to talk about in the festival as well. Um, oh, one thing that struck me is um, your work seems to have um, a connection to imperfection as well as, I don't know, a strive for perfection. I wondered if this imperfection um, could have a, a particular uh, function. So for instance, in the ideas of purity politics where everyone has to strive for perfection, it can be, it can really have you freeze up and uh, not act at all. And I was wondering if this could be some use of uh, imperfection yeah I mean I suppose I, I I'm often um working on the on the kind of principle of like ava availabilism so like even though like like maybe people notice within the film that like some of the young people just disappear at a certain moment and then they come back and they're in they're one shot and they're not and there's no kind of explanation for that but it's kind of drawing upon exactly the situation which was in hand like can that person come can what what uh some of the a lot of the young people were actually supporting themselves so in that instance like uh that's that's the reality so um i think i'm often yeah drawing upon like what what how can you make something happen and there's different levels of kind of how, how much you can be in control of that so i maybe i associate perfection in relation to control and um kind of is instead of uh yeah kind of accepting a level of desire of or thing of trying to make something happen but re being very responsive to that and i think yeah that's um that's what like i mean i mean uh, the, the I, maybe to counter that because i'm actually working in a very quite a raw way where um I mean, I'm very lucky to have budgets and stuff, but it's not a, uh, a, a huge kind of production we're talking about. But I, I suppose I'm interested in what I am able to make possible with it being very improvised and not working with any form of script or such like that. I, I sort of counter that by creating a very kind of uh, strong aesthetic feel, which... Um, balances that out and also because I think in 
a lot of st just struggle, I don't know, it's hard to find the right words, but struggles or when there is a level of difficulty, we're kind of um, expected for that material to be very rough and very, um, very, uh, I don't know, in, in the UK we had this, we had this phrase like kitchen sink realism and, and I suppose I feel like I'm often working from that perspective but by creating quite a, I'm, I, I almost want to cloak it in this level of, um, of, of, yeah, of consideration or like that or, or composure, just the way that the camera is, or things are filmed, but it's kind of, he it, it held, it, it's held somehow this quite kind of chaoticness, but then opens a new kind of light or alternative reality, which is actually very held together. I mean, maybe, maybe I, I don't know if I'm explaining that well enough, but I think that's what I mean from the question. Yeah, no, I understand what you mean. I think part of that is also um, your use of music. Yeah. Um, perhaps you can tell me a bit about the music that you used. Yeah, well, I write, uh, I write music all the time. So like as an artist, that's kind of like uh, one of the things which I'm just continually doing. Like I'm just constantly working on songs or collecting kind of melodies or harmonic structures and and writing I suppose quite um traditional kind of songs like as a songwriter and before I went to Idaho to film I had this one window to work with one of the singers I work with um Robin Haddon and we had this afternoon together and we just kind of like just uh brought out through like we just made three songs in that afternoon and then I took that material to Idaho to work on and then I I found uh this incredible singer on SoundCloud um called Declan Jo Ron uh Decl Declan Declan Rojon and um who was 13 at the time and and then I just, I invited her if she'd like to meet me part of the film. And then I worked on the songs with her. So it kind of adapted to her voice. But, um, and then I met another singer, Ezra, who is also singing two songs. But yeah, the songs of like, it creates a different space as well. Like I, I do a lot of co-writing, but I suppose a lot of the lyrics come from my side. Um, and the lyrics, are kind of like another space to um, kind of work through some of the, 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 the things or things being spoken about, which I've been working with, like, like with the teenagers in the film. So um, yeah, and the, the music is also in this film is quite like, it's quite orchestral. So it feels very, um, uh, almost traditional in a way um like and I yeah I think that the music in that film in particular also is a really important way that holds it together and also that like the music videos which were are in, within the film created this kind of alternative structure which um which kind of sort of takes it to a like a a different um, place, I suppose. Maybe, maybe it's also a desire, like to to kind of bring a more pop culture sense within the work in terms of just like thinking about how people are connect emotionally to to these issues. And if that's just a a, a song, like then that's in a really important way. Wonderful. Um... There's so many more questions that I wish I could ask you, but I'm afraid we've run out of time. Oh, so, um, yeah, but uh, thank you so much. And also thank you for, for allowing us to show your beautiful film in our festival. I think it's a very important uh, part of the, 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 what we're trying to say with it. Oh, so, thank you for inviting me.